College football recruiting is like a beauty contest. It's all about looks. We're gonna talk about it today on the Gridiron Stud Show. Hey, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. Recruiting advice for everyone. It's the Gridiron Stud Show. Yep, what's your height, what's your weight, what's your 40 time? These are all very important questions that get asked during the college football recruiting process and there's a reason for it. And we're gonna talk about that in the show today, but before I jump into this topic, be sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'm putting out content like this on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And as much as you can absorb of this college football recruiting content and become knowledgeable, the better chance you have of getting a college football scholarship. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell so that you're notified the next time I put out a video like this one. So who are the guys that you see getting all of the scholarships out there? It's usually the tall guy, the big guy, or the really, really fast guy. And there's a reason for that. And if you're not measuring up in those particular categories and you're finding it hard to get attention from college football coaches, I'm going to explain to you why things are the way that they are. Yes, you may be a dominant player right now at the high school level. However, what college football coaches must do is project what you're going to be two, three, maybe four years down the road. And the best way for them to do that, as they have learned over time, is by checking out body types and athletic traits. So the more of those traits that they can find in a player, the more comfortable they feel about that player being able to survive at the next level or even thrive at the next level. And while yes, it's important that you are able to play the game and be good at the game, I think we've all seen, if you're playing right now in high school and you were once a youth football player, I want you to now start thinking back to some of the youth football players that you played with and against and some of those guys that were really, really good at the youth football level ended up not being as good when they got to the high school level. Why? Because in youth football, they had certain advantages and they ended up not having those advantages anymore when they got to high school. So there may be a guy who hit puberty a little bit early while he was in youth football and he was able to dominate the competition because he maybe was a little bit bigger or stronger than the guys that were around him because he had that little advantage. And then when he got to the high school level, he stopped growing and now everyone caught up to him, passed him, and you know, maybe he's not so good anymore. He's not the dominant player that he was at the youth football level. So college football coaches don't wanna get caught in that particular situation with the guys that they go out and recruit. Now, it's a little bit different for them because when you get into the high school level, a guy probably should be at the end of puberty. So. It's a little bit more of what you see is what you get in the high school level. If a guy is, you know, maybe six feet or so, probably not gonna be 6'3 when he gets into college. He could be, but chances are that he won't be. If a guy's not really all that fast, yeah, he can get faster, but chances are he won't get that much faster. So what college coaches have to do is take a look at the player right now, whether he's dominant in the high school game or not, and project out what he's going to be. And what they've found over time is they have a better chance with a guy that is a certain height, he's a certain weight or a certain speed for particular positions, and having that guy be the dominant player or the kind of player that they need at the next level. And that's a reason why you will see some guys that are piling up pretty good stats or they tend to be a really good high school football player not getting as much attention or even getting passed up totally uh, at the college football level because they just don't project out to that guy. I always tell this story about a guy down here in South Florida that had 32 sacks his senior year. You would say to yourself, man, a guy like that's gotta play college football at the next level, he must be tremendous. Well, it turns out that player was five foot 11, 185 pounds. And sometimes in high school, the offensive tackles are just not that skilled. This guy had a tremendous amount of speed. He could get around those tackles, get into the backfield, and cause a lot of disruption. 32 sacks. If you're going by those stats, that's a college football player. But when you take a look at the size of the guy, 5'11", 6 feet, 185 pounds, you're definitely not going to be able to thrive at the next level playing defensive end at that position. I know what you're thinking. Why not play another position? Well wasn't quite fast enough for defensive back and wasn't quite big enough, believe it or not, for linebacker, all right? The way his body was put together, you really couldn't project this guy getting to about 210, 15, or even 20 pounds um, at the next level, which is kind of what he would have needed to be to take on blocks, 
and, and tackle the big backs that are at the next level. So it really is about the looks, as crazy as that sounds, the size of a guy, all right, his height, his weight. It's a projection that these college football coaches have to really concern themselves with. So it's not always about how well you're doing right now. It's about how well they think you're going to do into the future. Another big thing that college football coaches do is they use a model of what's been successful for them before at a position when they're out recruiting for the next guy that's coming in. So a college football coach has had some success with 6'4 quarterbacks and a guy that really, really did well for him. When he goes out, he's looking for the next one of those guys. So you can imagine he's going to be out there looking for 6'3", 6'4", 6'5 quarterbacks. Same thing with all of the other positions. If a college football coach has had a really good amount of success with 6'2 defensive ends, he's going to try and find the next guy that's that size. And while, you know, normally defensive ends are 6'4", 6'5", if a college football coach has had some success with a guy that was 6'2", and built a little bit differently, he's going to go out and look for those type of guys. So it's really about using a model of what has been successful for you at particular positions in the past and when you go out and you're trying to recruit for your next and future classes down the road. That's why you will hear stuff like a college football coach has been sent out on the road to find six foot corners. He has had success in the past neutralizing whatever it is that's going on with his opponents in his conference by having guys that were big. Now, some of the guys he's recruiting may not be very skilled right now, but what the colleges are thinking is that I can't coach a guy into being six foot if he's five eight. I can't coach a guy into being 4'4 four, four if he's 4'7. Maybe I can, but chances are I can't. So I've had success with those type of guys. Those are the guys that I want to be able to recruit into my program. And if he's not that skilled, or if he's not that great right now, grabbing a bunch of interceptions at the high school level, we'll teach him to do the things that we need him to do in that frame that we have had success with in the past. Now, does that always work? Of course not. Sometimes you get a guy that met your height and weight requirements that you need for the college football level and the guy just didn't pan out. He was not a very good player in high school and he ended up not being a very good player at the college football level. That's going to happen. But I will say this, college football coaches feel a lot more comfortable going down, losing with a recruit that they brought into the program if he was meeting those height and weight requirements than going down with a guy who didn't meet him and he ended up not being that player. So for instance, if I know that I want six foot one cornerbacks and I go out and find a five foot eight guy, if I bring that five foot eight guy in, he better be able to play. Or the recruiting coordinator or the coordinator for whatever side of the ball that it is, in this case that would be defense and the head coach is gonna be all over that position coach because they were already leery to begin with that this guy who's undersized is not going to be able to do the job. So if he comes in and he's not able to do the job, that's bad on the player, obviously, but it's going to be bad on that coach who went out and recruited him. Now, consequently, if he were to go out and get a six foot one guy and you bring him in and he ends up not being a player, the blame is actually shift more onto the player and less on the coach that recruited him because he went out and got a guy that met all of those requirements. So in that case, this all does seem kind of like a beauty contest. But if you're not one of those guys that meets those requirements, don't fret. I'm going to tell you how you can still survive in a world of college football recruiting without those things. So here's a part where you can help yourself. And it may not be exactly what it is that you want to do, but in the long run, you follow this path, you get yourself a college football scholarship, you'll be happier down the road. If you're a guy that's undersized or you're a guy that's not as fast, the best thing you need to do is find your fit. Now, what exactly does that mean? That means you go out and you find colleges, programs that have been successful using a guy like yourself, a guy that is built like you. Remember how I told you coaches use a model of what's worked for them in the past? Well, going back to the cornerback example, if a school has had successful cornerbacks at the size of five foot nine or five foot 10, then those are the schools, if you're five foot eight, five foot nine, five foot 10, that you wanna focus on. Because again, they've had success with a guy that size and they are more apt to take a guy like that because someone has been successful at that size before. If you're woefully undersized, then you're just gonna have to be a trailblazer and you already knew the path was gonna be hard. But for the rest of you guys, listen, you've gotta just try and find a fit if you 
can find a school if you're a 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 quarterback, and maybe you look at a school that's had a spread offense with a quarterback that was that size, that has had success, your best bet is to try and go after and contact and get in with that program because they're not going to shun you aside because in the past they've had a guy that size who has done it. You don't want to go to a program that's only had six foot two, six foot three quarterbacks. And you come in there at 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 your leash is going to be short. They're not going to accept very many mistakes from you and you're going to make mistakes. You know that? It's going to be a very, very difficult path for you if you're trying to break into a place that's never really had a quarterback like you. You can take that gamble, but please understand it's going to be very, very difficult. It's going to be frustrating. And again, your leash is going to be short. And it goes for all positions. Defensive ends where they want six foot four, six foot five guys, go to a place that has had guys six foot six one, if that's what you are, and have had success with guys at that size at that position. That's simply how it is you go about finding your fit. Trying to force your way into a place that has never had a guy like you is probably not the route to go. If you choose to go that route, please understand what you're getting yourself into. They are gonna be constantly looking for your replacement unless you hit it out of the park right away and you have yourself a tremendous amount of success early, which sometimes involves a certain amount of luck. It's very, very risky. So I would advise you guys to find your fit and not try to force a square peg into a round hole. All right, so I hope that gives you guys some understanding into what college football coaches look for when they're out trying to recruit. Yes, it does indeed look like a beauty contest. It's about your looks. It's about how tall you are. It's about how big you are. It's about how fast you are because once again, they have to project what you're gonna be at the next level and in the next two, three, four years, all right? You can help yourself quite a bit by finding your fit may not be at your dream school, may not be in the conference that you think you should be playing in, could be in a conference that not, that's not as highly publicized or regarded, but if you go there and you're in a place that really, really wants you and you can set the world on fire, you're gonna have your opportunity at that next, next level, and we all know what that is, the NFL. You wanna go ahead and try and do the best you can at the college that you're at so that you have an opportunity to play at the professional level at some day. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me, cwilson at gridironstuds.com. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. It's at gridironstuds. You can send me a message there in my DMs, and I will get back to you with, uh, hopefully, a really good answer to your question. Outside of that, as I told you guys at the outset, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Be a bunch of college football recruiting information coming your way. Be sure to hit the bell so that you're notified. And finally, give this video a like. All right, big thumbs up, and also share it with a friend of yours that may need this information as well. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, Gridiron Studs, be seen.